Belarusian President Alexander Lukashenko alleged that the opposition planned to seize a district in the west of the country and request support from NATO troops. Representatives of the Belarusian opposition, who have gone abroad, want to seize one of the regions in the country, declare a new government there and send NATO troops there, President of Belarus Alexander Lukashenko said, at least to seize one, I don't know why they chose it, the Kobrin district, they talk a lot about it there. But it's not near the border itself. There are closer to the borders. No, the Kobrin district. Seize, declare power, contact NATO, send in troops, Lukashenko said, speaking at the All-Belarusian People's Assembly, Lukashenko also appealed to the oppositionists who are planning a forceful seizure of power in Belarus, with an appeal not to put their relatives who live in the country at risk, you have some property here. I advise you to forget about her, but don't put your relatives at risk, the President of the Republic said, the day before, Lukashenko said that the population of Belarus has never lived as well as it does now while the country must develop further one way or another. He also expressed confidence that the real power of the Belarusian state is measured by its desire to make the world a better place. Lukashenko complained about 120,000 Ukrainian troops on the border with Belarus and announced a prevented UAV attack from Lithuanian territory on targets in Minsk. It was not clear if Lukashenko provided any evidence for such a plan. All Belarus's main opposition figures are in prison or have been forced into exile. If Ukraine doesn't get its lands back after US and UK aid, it will have to negotiate with Putin. Ukraine will receive more than half a billion dollars in new British military aid that is aimed at helping Kyiv push back the Russian invasion on land and sea, according to UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The British package comes on the heels of the US House of Representatives finally passing a $60 billion military aid bill after months of wrangling. With the boost in Western support for Kyiv's forces, Ukraine's military command needs to start seriously thinking about the counter-offensive and recapturing their land, Ukraine analyst Viktor Kovalenko told Newsweek. Sunak's office said on Tuesday that the latest funding will be used to rapidly deliver ammunition, air defense, drones and engineering support. The drones will be procured in the UK and the funds will support a scaling up in domestic defense supply chains, Sunak's office said, with the British Ministry of Defense sending our largest ever single package of equipment from the UK. The package contains 60 boats, including offshore raiding craft, rigid raiding craft, dive boats, maritime guns, over 1,600 strike and air defense missiles, storm shadow long-range precision guided missiles, 160 protected mobility Husky vehicles, 162 armored vehicles, 78 all-terrain vehicles, 4 million rounds of ammunition. The Storm Shadow long-range precision-guided missiles have already proven effective in striking Russia's Black Sea Fleet. Crucially, the package will include 4 million rounds of small arms ammunition, which has been sorely needed by Ukraine's forces. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that following the House's passing of U.S. aid, everything has been decided in the ATA-CMS negotiations for Ukraine, referring to the U.S. Army tactical missile system, which can strike targets up to about 186 miles away. Kovalenko, a Ukrainian combat veteran from 2014 to 2015, said that despite the Western support, time is definitely on Russia's side to cut the Donbass and they have manpower for that. With the US aid package, the Ukrainian military command needs to start seriously thinking about the counter-offensive and recapturing their land, he said. If Kyiv won't be able to do that this year or gain back just a few villages, President Zelensky will have to go to the negotiating table with Putin to save Ukraine as a state, at least in its existing shape, Kovalenko said. <laughs> Soldiers of the invading Russian army have shot own fellow soldiers from another military unit in Okoratino settlement near the city of Avdiivka in Ukraine's Donetsk region. The incident occurred as Russian invaders mistook their fellow soldiers for the soldiers of the Russian Volunteer Corps fighting within the Ukrainian army. The incident that took place on April 7 was publicized by relatives of the killed servicemen, after which the report was circulated on Telegram channels. Entering the position, Russian soldiers immediately opened fire without clarifying the identity of the soldiers standing in front of them. Then they took pictures of the killed soldiers, describing them as enemies. 
The review of the documents belonging to the soldiers revealed that those killed were soldiers of the Russian army. Украина.